In this video, I'm going to talk about how we get the formula for the area of a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi r squared doesn't really mean a lot to me anyway. I don't have a good feeling or a sense of why this has anything to do with the area of a circle. r squared is the radius squared. So if you take a point that's right in the center and draw a line straight to the edge, you get a radius. So from here to here is a radius. From here to here is a radius. Here to here is a radius. Here to here is a radius. In fact, I could do a lot more radii. Um, from here to here, that's a radius too. And from here to here, that's a radius too. I can keep going like this if I wanted to infinitely. So what does r squared mean? Well, r squared means a square made of r's, literally. So um, if you have a radius that is this length, then you would have a radius that is this length, and let's make that a nice 90 degree angle. And then you would have another radius length, and then another radius length. See how this is an r, 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 r square? Sounds like a pirate or something. So here's the thing. This is a square radius, if you think of it. So what if you wanted to come up with the area of this square? Let's say that the radius was three. So all these are three. Um, what would the area of this be? Well, it would be, you would chunk it up into three this way and three this way. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It would be nine little squares, it would be nine square units um, if this radius was three. But let's say that we don't know what the radius is exactly. So instead of three squared, right? So this is three times three is nine. So this whole thing is three squared. That's how you find the area of a square. You just multiply one side times the other. Um, in general, instead of saying three squared, because you want to generalize it, you would say r squared. So this square has a area, an area of r squared. How does that help us? It doesn't. It doesn't help us. So um, what would that look like over here? Again, uh, we could make a square of radii. So radius, 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 radius. It kind of looks like a square. Um, so this is r squared. This is what r squared looks like, just plopping this over here. So um, part of this is in the circle. So finding out the area of this square, well, okay, well, at least I get this area. But then what about this part? This, this is not even in the circle. Well, why would we even care about that? We're not, this doesn't have anything to do with the, the area inside a circle. It's outside the circle. So how does r squared, a square of r's, help us? That, that's why this formula, uh, people memorize it and they have no idea where it comes from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to explain where it comes from, okay? So let's, let's just kind of put this on the back burner, all right? Let's actually, from the ground up, if we were to come up with the formula for the area of a circle, how would we do it? What do you think we would like to do? Well, I would probably try to get this circle shape into something that I do know how to get the area of. Wouldn't it be cool if somehow I could take the area of a circle, slice it up into a million little parts, or even more, and then come up with a shape that I do know the, the area that does feel good of what the area formula is. For instance, a rectangle. A rectangle, it feels good when we do the area of it. Let's say that this is, uh, let's say that one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's five units long, okay? And uh, let's call it uh, two units high. One, two. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten squares here. Well, I try to make them as squarey as possible, 
Okay, so how do you get that? You multiply five times two and you get 10. So this whole thing is 10. You could count it up, you could multiply. That feels right. It feels like it makes sense. The area of an, a rectangle is length times width. And it feels good to do it. Like, it makes sense. Doing this with the circle, not so much. So if we could somehow get the area of a circle into the area of a rectangle that was the same area, then we could find out the area of that rectangle, and that would be the area of the circle that it came from. So wouldn't it be great to be able to chop this up, to rearrange it so that we could get it into a shape like a rectangle? We can do that. We actually can do that. And that's how the visual proof of this works. What we are going to do is we are going to unravel this circle and we are going to make it into a rectangle. So let's look at this. Uh, let me complete this uh, so it goes over here. So this is like, these are like cutting right across. Okay. So let's, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight slices. Okay. So what happens if I, if I take just one of these slices? I can rearrange, I can rearrange these slices and it's still the same area. It's just rearranged. Okay. If you have a piece of pizza uh, that you take out from a whole pizza and you put it on the counter, there's still, unless you eat it, there's just as much pizza still left. Okay. So we're going to take a piece of pizza. All right. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it uh, right here. All right. We're going to make this piece of pizza right here. All right. In fact, to not uh, fool anybody, why don't I label all of these? I'll label this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there, there's eight pieces. So I put number one right here. Uh, I'll put number two right here like this, and then three, and then four. <laughs> that was not very good. Let me do a little bit better. Two, then three, and then four. Okay, one, two, three, four. I'm running out of room. Uh, that's not good. So this is what I'm gonna do. Because I'm running out of room, I've gotten one, two, three, four. So I've gotten half. I've gotten exactly half the circle area represented over here. Not bad. Uh, I'm running out of room, so uh, this is what I'm gonna do. Do you kind of see these? I wish I did a little bit better. But these, these are gaps. These are gaps. Do you see these gaps? This is a gap, that's a gap, that's a gap. Well, what I could do is I could slide, since I'm running out of room this way, I could slide, I could slide uh, number five, slice number five in here, and it'll, and it'll fit perfectly. And I'll slide number six in here. And I'll slide seven in here. And then, hmm, this is what I'll do. I'm going to take eight, the eighth slice, and I'm going to cut the eighth slice in half. I'm going to cut the eighth slice in half. So this is going to be half the eighth slice. So that's uh, uh, half the eight, the eighth. That's the half, half the eighth slice. Um, let me do it as perfectly as I can, just right down the middle. And then I'll do, I'll put the other half right here, like that. So this is half the eighth slice. This isn't a rectangle yet, but it's looking pretty close to a rectangle, isn't it? Um, these are kind of like uh, these bowed out parts of the, the rounded part. So the, and this is also rounded out here. But here's the thing. Do you see, can you imagine that if I were to slice this, each slice into halves again, then I would be able to have these like this. And so I could scoot that a little bit over here so that it's, it'll get more like this. 
if I have each of these, then yeah, but the bumps will be the bumps will be smaller. And then if I have those again, have those again, each one again, I'm going to have them again. And so there's going to be even smaller bumps. Okay, now so you see how it's getting looking more and more like the uh, a straight base of a of a rectangle. And then if I do it an infinite number of times, it's going to be a straight line. I'm going to have smoothed out all of those bumps if I slice these into a infinite number of slices. And the top as well, I'll have made this eventually into a straight line. And these are straight up and down like that. So what we've done is taken all of the slices, and I mean, these would be, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of slices sliced all up. But you would take all of the, you wouldn't want to eat it anymore. It would be like mush. But you would be able to put it into a rectangle. Rectangles we can deal with. Rectangles we know the area formula. This rectangle is the same area as this um, pizza pie because we just rearranged the slices. Okay, so let's try to find the area of this rectangle now. Okay, well, let's see what the height is. What's the height? The height of each slice. Remember I sliced these up, sliced these up? But when I sliced them up, I didn't change the height of the slice. The, the height of the slice is always from the center to the edge. Center to the edge, center to the edge, center to the edge. The center to the edge is called the radius. So the height of each of these slices is the height of each of these slices. And so the height of each of these slices is the height of the rectangle. And so the height of the rectangle here is R. So that's where our first R comes from. We got a second R coming in. But that's the, the height of this rectangle is a height of R. R is just a letter that represents radius, meaning this will work for any circle ever because we're dealing with a radius of R, not a radius of a specific number. I'm not telling you that this height is two inches and that this is two inches. No, I'm just saying it's R because it came from here, okay? Now we got to figure out what the length is. What is this length? Okay, so this length, I'll get to in a second. First, let's start out with a small circle here, okay? So this small circle has a circumference. What is the formula for any circumference? The circumference, we'll call it C, is two pi r. Two times the radius is the diameter. So you could think of the circumference as two pi r, two radii times pi, or you could just think of it as pi times the pi times the diameter. Pi times the diameter or two pi r are the same thing. So um, let's just call it two pi r for, for the moment. So if I were to take this circle and unravel it, if I were to take this, cut it, and then unravel it, I would have the circumference but in a straight line, okay? So the circumference around is the same as the circumference when it's unraveled. So the circumference is still 2 pi r if I unravel it, okay? So here's the thing. Remember we did all of the uh, slices here, like this? I did that over here, here. Okay, so if we were to unravel all of these slices, the edges, the, the crust, so to speak, would be the circumference, okay? So can you see that if we were to lay them all out, the crust, and imagine this is like an infinite number of slices, if you were to unravel this, it would go along this line, this line being the unraveled circumference. So if I were to do this out, it would be like this, okay? So all these are the slices. And remember, I did that over here, but I ran out of room. If I had had the room, I wouldn't have had to uh, intermesh the 
uh, five, six, seven, and the eights on either side. I wouldn't have had to do that. I would have had enough room to do it all the way out. If I could keep going like that, I would have, okay? So if I go like this the entire way, this entire thing is the entire crust. The entire crust is the circumference, which we have already said is two times pi times r, okay? This, this entire length right here is the circumference. Do you see that there are gaps in here? Just like there were gaps right here, when I did one, two, three, four, I had gaps, which is why I put the other half into the gaps that were left. So if this entire thing was the circumference, which this, the circumference would have gone off, off the screen here if I did the whole circumference. I only did half the circumference here, and I put the other half in between to intermesh. So if this entire thing is 2 pi r, and I were to cut this in half, and then put these, this other half, and intermesh it, like I did with five, six, seven, and then I had to cut the eights to make it a nice uh, vertical side on either end. What I would do is I would take these, I would intermesh them like uh, two hair combs coming together to intermeshing, and I would take exactly half and I would put them on all of the gaps, and then I would fill it in just like I filled it in over here. So if I did that, if I were to take this and put it there, I would take away half of this length. The entire length, entire length with all the gaps in there is again, the circumference, two pi r. But if I were to take away half of that length and intermesh it so it made a very nice rectangle, this length right here would only be half of two pi r, half the circumference. What is half of two pi r? It's two pi r divided by two. Half of 2 pi r is 1 pi r. Half of 2 pi r is 1 pi r. So this length is not the full circumference anymore. This length was, was, was the circumference. Half of it is, is not. This whole length was 2 pi r. Half of it is 1 pi r. So this length right here is pi r. Therefore, this length is pi r. And what did we say the height was? of each of these slices, r, the radius. We now have a rectangle that has a height of r and a length of pi r. How do we get the area of a rectangle? We multiply the length times the height. The length times the height, the area of a rectangle is the length times the height, or length times the width, whatever you want to say. So the area of this rectangle is the length, which is pi r, times the height, which is r. Pi r times r. Pi r times r. Pi r times r. That's r squared. This is pi r squared. This rectangle that we made has an area of pi r squared. And every single slice, now, one more, not one less, that is comprising, composing, is inside this rectangle, all came from this circle. So therefore, if this rectangle is pi r squared, then the area that it was formed from, this circle, must also be pi r squared. And there you have it. That's how you get the formula through a visual proof. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. When people say pi r squared, the r's come from two different places, really. One is the half the circumference. That's where one r comes from. And the other r comes from the height of the slice. So this is what I challenge you to do. Instead of thinking of the area as pi r squared, which, yes, it's true, but it combines these r's, which I don't think is a satisfying way to think of it. What I think is a more satisfying way to think of the area of a circle is the area of a rectangle that it can be formed into. And the area of that rectangle is 
the radius times pi r, but what is pi r? 2 pi r is the circumference. Since we halved it to fill in these gaps, we have only half the circumference. This is half the circumference. 2 pi r is the full circumference, so 1 pi r, or pi r is half the circumference. So what I would challenge you the next time when you think of the area of a circle is, instead of saying area is pi r squared, I would challenge you to think of area equals the radius times half the circumference. This is a much more satisfying way of thinking about the area formula for a circle. Just food for thought. Thanks.